Hello, good day. Welcome back. Glad to have you. So I'm pretty excited because we're going to be leaving intermediate, HTML intermediate, and going into advanced where we're going to start talking about forms. Okay. And so this is where we left off doing a layout with Angular um, JS material. And so let me just jump to my um, terminal here. And what I did was I just created a directory and change to it. So I created a directory called chapter 03, um, section 03. Chapter 03 is on HTML. Section 03 is advanced. And I just changed to that directory. And then we're still here in Git and it's telling me at all I'm on the materials layout. Now, if you don't have a fancy terminal like I do, I'm using a fish terminal here. You can see fish in the corner. Um, that's fine. You can do Git log and it's going to show you or even Git branch uh, branch and it's going to show you that oh, oh um, you're in the material layouts branch and these are all your branches okay and if you look you're going to see also here it says head head is where you are and head is on this material layout branch which is also happens to be chapter um, section chapter 3 section 02 so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do git um, checkout minus branch chapter 03 section 03 and um, this for now is going to be the exact same as uh, this is just another label for this exact same material layout branch and that's because I'm branching right here now I haven't made any changes so they both are the same but as I commit changes this material layout is going to stay on this um, commit ID here and then this uh, this guy is going to move uh, be moved you will see when I make my first change so uh, let's let's do it and so um, here this doesn't change this is still in the intermediate directory so I'm gonna say open folder and I wanted to go into the advanced directory that's what I want to create stuff and no file in here so I'm gonna say new file I'm gonna say index.html and there's nothing there and because I have templates installed for bootstrap I'm gonna say choose temple HTML5 template and that's installed for me okay and um, if I want, I could get skid this running. Uh, close that one. Have this one running. And so let's just change the title here to um, HTML forms, right? Or HTML form. And um, so in my body, um, it's almost like if we're going back to basic. HTML form is simply the form tag. Ah, come on and then inside the form tag you can put a number of tags one of the most basic and simplest uh, form element uh, you can create that's this is inside of a form tag so using the form element here introduces a HTML form is uh, input okay so you could say input and actually I'm not even gonna do anything else and notice when I type that I got this box over here that I can type in see that's my, my form now, what you might want to do is actually um, put something in front of this, like um, name, like that, and, you know, so have something that looks like this now. So this is a label. You could select a label for your form, but just try to type in some text. Now, you can be fancy and actually do something like this. Um, you can actually say this is a label and say label and for, there's an attribute name and you'll see when where this makes sense and then I'll remove this from here and put it here and then I said this label is for something within uh, that has the value name so here's my input and if I want that label for, to kind of say that label belongs to this input I could say name of this uh, input is name and so now the browser kind of associate these two, okay? It doesn't really matter. And I say, could I just leave the, the text in front of it and it wouldn't make any difference. But this is how you'd use the label element to kind of associate it with an in, um, a, like an input element, right? So to attach a label, if you want to make it explicit that way. And um, then I can do things like value equals some value. And if I save this, you'll uh, go over there and refresh. And you can see my input has some value. So this is some pre-populated value. Um, 
But what I might need more than, might be finding more useful than pre-populated value is something, pre-populated value is good if you want to use like a default. What I might want is a placeholder. Okay, and so let me save that. And I go over here, I know you see it's kind of faded, grayed out, but you could still see it, it says, please enter your name. And once I start typing, it goes away. Okay, once it's empty, it shows that. And so that's probably pre preferable in some uh, situations where you don't know what the value should be and you want to give the user a prompt, like, you know, please enter your name, please enter your email, please enter your street, that kind of thing. And this is, I think, preferable than doing something like this, you know, before placeholder, you had placeholder, you used to do um, something like this, you give direction to the user, like here, like please enter like a name, for example. Right, you do something like that. Um, you've probably seen forms like that. Um, okay, so I, I think a placeholder is, is much better. Even if you still want to do something like that, you could still say, example, all right, could still do the same thing, that's fine. All right, so now you've learned about the input form element. You can give it a name, you can give it a placeholder, you can give it a value. And notice the way I'm using it here. Uh, that's not that important. You can actually, it would still work if you do it, um, you know, the other way like this. But since you don't nest anything of inside of input, uh, form element, I always end it this way to say, hey, there's nothing, no nesting going on. Um, you see the label um, form element. Um, so let's just duplicate this. And um, let's try and create a form. So I got a form in the mail yesterday. Um, I took a picture of it, but now I can't really upload it. Anyway, so I'll try and recreate that form. That form had this, it had straight, um, I actually actually arrive it here. I can look at it and that's straight and then that's on one line like so I could say BR to break force it to the next line and then what it had it had um, city So I should probably change this to name, but because like I said, I, I want to get away from Using this I'm just gonna be all simple and take away that um, You're gonna see something very different though when, um, oh, I don't want to save this here. I want to save here. Um, refresh, right? Um, so now I say this is, no, I don't, I'm not using the name. So poop, placeholder. Um, I'm not going to use placeholder here. Um, you should know what a street is. Um, you might still want to use name um, for your form because for some things, because when you submit a form, which is what happens when you say, I finished typing my information, I want you to save it to and send it to, back to the server. Because yeah, we haven't talked about it much, but when you write HTML pages, they're served up by a server. So in your web browser here, you're saying, go to the server at running on this port. And we haven't talked about all that stuff yet, but there's a, what happened is when I click this live button, it actually launches something called a, a web, simple web server. And this number represents my local computer, and this is the port number that that little, little server is running on. So I'm asking that to serve up this form for me, and asking for specifically for this form, and it's giving me back this form. And so if I had a submit button, which we'll get to in a minute, and I say submit this form, I'm say collect the data that you user have typed and send it back to that um, server. Now, um, you in code, when you want to understand which field is the street and which one is the city, the only way you know that is because the form would take the name value and associate it with each um, property that's enter or value that's enter. And so that's how you would know. So yeah, so for that reason, you wanna uh, give it a name, okay? Um, we'll see when, depending on what kind of library you're using, you might be able to get away without giving a name, but that's beyond the scope um, of this. So this is straight. Uh, we can leave the first one with a label, ex explicit label. And then um, what they have coming after the street. That state. Um, okay, that's my phone. Okay. Oh, silly. Um, so let me do copy and paste and paste. And they had a state. 
and they add zip and zip and they had this all on one line and so now it looks like this right um, the street um, let me take out this placeholder the street was much longer you know it went across let's say the entire page and so for this uh, there's a calls equals let's say 140 maybe uh, there's a number of columns or characters you you want to have and it's not spanning out so um, it, it's just so much space you want it to show up on the screen I mean you could type more than 40 in here I mean you could keep going even after you reach the end it just uh, keeps scrolling over so being able to just say how wide this is going to be um, so let's just do width style with uh, let's do 300 pixels right so you, I could see it change in the background already so that's how wide it looks on the screen and so this is not lining up properly like you could see it'd be nice to have this form the beginning of this input line up with this one and so on so we'll have to do a little bit more than just plopping them down here to, to hope that they line up and it had home phone number home phone and then it had okay uh, home phone um, it had business phone um, then mobile phone and email address okay and then they had signature and date okay so date was the last one and date and since this is um i'm going to put name full name since you know signature the active for signature i'll just put full name instead of saying signature and this one was email address so i'm trying to recreate this form i'm looking at which you cannot see but you just have to trust me that thought these are <laughs> mobile phone and uh, this was on a line by itself and um, so I think it said um, so it was zip home phone and then business phone and then it did a BR there was a new line so we do a BR so the form pretty much looks something like this right uh, this went all the way to the width of the form and then these guys were spaced out nicely of course we're not going to get that without doing using some layout thing, things like we learned before so that's how you can lay this out right using rows and stuff if you're using bootstrap or whatever you understand layout I showed you how to do it with um, tables so you can imagine how to do this um, you know a table there's the first row and it span you know three columns this would be a second row with each one of these things in their own cell. Um, and then these guys would be in, you know, other rows. And that's the problem now, because now yet if you did three columns, now how do these guys take half and half? So you'd actually have to do six columns. And so each one of these take up two, as you can see. That's why people don't like doing table layout, and it's just much easier to use things, something like Bootstrap or AngularJS. But anyway, um, so that's, at the end, if I have some time, I'll, I'll probably... Um, try and do a better layout of it. So, so this is what the form look like here. But all these are, I didn't even say what type of input. This, we know a date input. If the user types this, that's not a valid date. So what we can do is say type equals date, right? And so now when the type is set to date, notice how it's rendered by the browser so you can choose a date. And so it's impossible for you to type something um, invalid here. And full name is, you know, by default, these inputs are defaulted into type equals text, right? All of them are defaulted into type equals text. Well, again, email, the type for email is not just text. Um, so the browser knows that what email is. And so you won't see it here. Um, it wouldn't be, uh, I want to save here. Um, it wouldn't show anything visually that oh, this is an email, but um, there's a way, as you'll see later on, for us to be able to detect if somebody types something that's not an email. For example, if somebody just typed John at, 
that's not a valid email or even john at com that's not a valid email or john at bob you know or book or whatever um, that that's not all oh, this is not valid email valid email is when it looks something like this and so this field know how to process what's a valid email if they type this that come you know it knows that that's not a valid email all this stuff right so it knows what a valid email phone number there's nothing special for a phone number so we can still do type equals um, and it depends on if you wanted to accept all text for your phone number or if you want to make it as number okay so you have to decide um, the reason you might want to still ac accept text instead of numbers is because you might want the user to be able to type in those dashes and so on. But notice, now that's a number, uh, I have this little scrolly spinner here, they call it. Okay? And so, uh, my phone, uh, should have muted this before. Okay? So, for that reason, uh, you might still want to use text because uh, it looks kind of weird. Um, here and if somebody may type in a phone number like this but it's not well formatted it doesn't look nice so um, you know and if they try to type in uh, you can't see it but I'm trying to type in text and it doesn't work so you might still want this to be text again there are controls that allows you to format that nicely and so home phone number again this defaults to type text but I'm making it explicit here um, this one is definitely type number. We should make this number. And, you know, type text. And type text. No, I made a mistake somewhere. Uh, here, double quote, okay. And this last one here, type equals text. All right, so sweet. Now we have a form. Let me expand this a little bit. Now we have a form, save it. And I go over here, refresh, and nothing looks any different than we think. There's only one thing that's missing. Now I'm looking at a paper form and reproduce this, okay? One of the things that you would want, as I said, when you finish typing up all your information, is to be able to say, oh, I'm done. And so you want to be able to put a button on the form. And so, B U C button, and, um, you know, type. You can do a submit button or a reset button. And so let's do a reset button first. And then I'll say clear, call this clear. And so um, save this, go here, and I refresh. And let me do a BR here so we can get this on a line by itself. And let's see, if I type some things, type some things, type it all over, whatever. You just might want to clear the form, right? So that's what a reset button is for. Just hitting the clears the form. So you might want to give the user that. Um, the submit button is you know you could call it submit or save right and essentially it's the button that says hey i'm done typing take everything out of type and send it to the back end now if we click submit what you see at the top is you see what it did it seems like it made a request to the back end server with the names that we give for the, here, you remember I said, if you give the input names, this is how the form know how to associate it, value it. And it says name equals, and then there's nothing there, and the ampersand name equal. So that's a one way of sending the information to the back end. I'll explain another time. So if I were to type something here like um, one, two, three, some street, and then I do a save again, you'll see that appears up here. So it's actually making a request to the server, passed in these as parameters. So that's one way in which it could pass um, data from the form to the server. Of course, this is not very secure because, as you can see, um, exactly where you type in the form is appearing at the top in the URL here, um, so in this entire URL. So we haven't covered it yet, but there's um, something called action, um, and it tells you where to send it when you do a save. Um, by default, it's sending it back to the same place this form was loaded. And then there's something called method. And you could do post or get. By default, it's doing a get, and that's what you see in there. It's trying to get this page and pass in the stuff on, with the parameters on it. But don't worry about that. If I do post now and I save it, uh, if I um, save this page, and then um, I don't want to pass all that. Oh, jeez. Um, let me see. Back, back, back. Okay. 
uh, here's where I want to be. Okay, here. And then if I type some things and then I click, oh, refresh. Okay. If I type some things and I click save now, notice how you see it cannot post, right? So try to do a post here. It failed, but you don't see those form values here. So that's a more secure way and that's what websites use now. Okay, so now you've learned about input labels, different types of inputs like number, email, date, and there are a number of other ones. I'm not going to show you all of them because you could just look and you can see. And buttons, how to do clear and submit buttons. You can, of course, call your button anything else and take other actions. So you can attach some JavaScript code so that if somebody click on it, before they actually do like the default of submitting, it prompts you and say, oh, are you sure you want to submit it and or validate the form first and then say, oh, something is missing. Or if they're going to clear it, you might want to prompt them to say, hey, you're about to clear it. So we'll continue and look at some more form controls, but let's do this. I said maybe I can, um, I can cut the video if it looks too long, but and you could skip over this part because this part is just how to lay this out with a table. And so let's do it. So let's consider this is the end of the video on forms. And then um, what I'm going to do now is just bonus, um, hopefully for five minutes. And so if you're not interested in seeing how to lay this out with tables, and you just want to do it with like Bootstrap or AngularJS, go right ahead. Or you don't care what the laying out of the form right now, go right ahead. So, all right, bye. See you in uh, the next video when we talk about more form, type of form controls. Uh, we'll cover like check boxes and so on. All right, and selection boxes and so on. So for the rest of you, stay back if anyone stayed back and looking, or future me when I look at this again. We're gonna do a table, and then we're gonna say table row, and um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this table um, a table with uh, table data. Um, and I'm going to say uh, column span equals six. So this span says column. And I'm going to put this, um, well, actually, um, should it span say column? Actually, no, I'm going to say this span two column. And I'm gonna put the label in here. Um, copy the, what we have here. I'm gonna cut that, paste that here. Then I'm gonna say table data, column span, and I'm gonna say four. And actually, I could have put six and put the whole thing in one uh, thing, but all right. Let's, yeah, uh, let me do that six and I'm gonna put the whole thing in here. It, it doesn't really matter. I mean, I don't even, I think I know how it's gonna look. I haven't done this yet, but you have to play with it. And that's why, so how I try to do lay, tilt it, label, layout to the table. And then I'll make another row, close this row off, table row. And then I'll start another table row. All right. All right, so in another table row, I'm going to say this span two columns, and it's city and this guy. I'm going to cut it, and what I'm going to do actually is, before I cut it, um, Ctrl-Z, I'm going to copy this a few times. So I'm going to say copy, um, paste, paste, because of the tree up, and then... Um, Table row, um, and I'll paste this there. Okay, I'll leave that for now. So I'll cut, cut this out, cut this, um, paste this in there. Then I'm gonna cut this out, paste this in here. I'm gonna cut out zip, and I'll paste it in here. I'm gonna select all, I'm gonna say beautify, I'm gonna save it, and go over here, refresh. And so, um, this look kinda a little bit better. Um, these three look nicely spaced out. Oh, this is column, supposed to be column span of six. So save that, and refresh. And, um, it doesn't go all the way to the end. I don't know 
why it's not going all the way to the end column span six uh this is two two anyway let me continue adding the rest and see what my table look like okay so i have here i have the rest are gonna be uh two things each so copy um paste and so the row is divided into two so that means it's three and so i'm going to home wait a second uh what did i mess up so number is name zip okay so this is a name um this should be home phone huh i didn't see that business phone and phone email and okay that looks fine now so I copy this cut it and I'm going to paste it in here I'm going to copy this cut it paste it in here and I forgot to copy a few more of those guys so table row um, table data column span three okay so copy this paste it and then I need table row copy this um, I do paste once and so oh, I need to include that and another row okay so let's see um i got bit mobile phone cut and place that in this row here in this cell then i got email cut paste that here and i got phone name Cut that out, place it here, and I got date, cut, paste it here. I mean, my screen is going to look a little messy to you. I don't need these BR, and I certainly don't need these BR here because um, I'm using um, a table with cells, so I don't need to explicitly break at each line. So let's see. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to clean up a little bit. Then I still have a last table here with two things. So I'm going to cut these guys, put them in there, a last row. And uh, cut these guys, put them in there. Okay. I don't have to put them, separate them. But, you know, again, this is just laying out and however you want to lay out. And so, again, let's like that. Click Beautify. Save that. And all those look at our form. Let's refresh. And looks a little bit better. Um, you know, these seem to be a nice space between here. These seems to be lined up, seem to be lined up here. And, um, you know, these guys in the middle look good. This I wish it would go all the way over and fill this. Um, you can do other things, you know, and make sure that these are lined up with the edge here. They have good, the right size and so on. I think if we actually use... Um, to put each one of these labels in their own cell, you know, do um, maybe um, three here, three there, three there, three there, and then, um, you know, uh, divide this accordingly. So that's four trees, 12, and then do here, four, four, four. So you see, you can go back and you have to play with how many column spans you want to do and so on to make this um, look right, right? So we can actually do a row cell of 12 um, and then adjust these accordingly okay um, but uh, I just wanted to show how you can use table to kind of lay it out a little bit better than what we had and it's still not good enough right it doesn't it still doesn't look that clean but it can certainly get better and it was just a pain trying to get these and it got confusing look how you know how much more we had to put in around our table so now you see why I showed you layout with those other things and say, 
don't even try using this stuff for doing layout. Um, all right, so this was kind of extra, just trying to say we can make it a little better, but I'll end this here and see you in the next video. Uh, bye, thanks for your time, bye.